Oh dear God, anoint us one more time, Lord. Touch these sinuses, touch my throat one more time, dear Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh, in the name of Jesus, we pray. Lord, thank you for bringing us through this week. Lord, I pray that somebody in here be encouraged, Heavenly Father. If anybody's watching through YouTube and they don't know you, Lord, I pray that they run and find you before it's everlasting too late. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Ghost. Amen. We're, hello, we're back again. We are still in the book of Romans. Can you believe it? And we're just going to do one verse today. Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 15. But... Leave your Bibles open because we're going to make frequent uh, references to right here within this 10th chapter of Romans and close by. Romans, the 10th chapter, verse 15, tells us this. And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who bring glad tidings to, or excuse me, of good things. The subject this morning is going to come from right there nestled in that 15th verse in the 10th chapter of the book of Romans. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. Here, Paul took uh, did something different when we look at verse 13 it says for whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved now put a pin there then he goes into verse 14 how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed and if somebody doesn't know Jesus if they don't know the Lord they don't know God that means they don't believe but you know, how can you get to that person? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? But then listen, and how shall they hear without a preacher? So it's important, the word of God, the preached word of God, the taught word of God, the proclaimed word of God is important. But many people today don't care about preaching. They don't care about the preachers. They don't care about church. They don't care about God's word. They don't care about anything. The only time it seems to bother them a little bit if they get a tummy ache or it looks like they may get a bad report from the doctor. But many people are believing that it is all about them psychologically. It's all about them physiologically. It's all about them from a philosophical standpoint. It's about them. No, it's about our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Because in that same chapter, that same Romans the 10th chapter, it tells us specifically in verse 9 that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. A lot of people don't believe that. I run into people all the time that want to come with it. Here's a big word for you. Their own musings, meaning whatever they and choice, whatever is conjured up in their mind. So they're going to believe what they believe somebody at the barbershop. They're going to believe somebody what they conjured up in their mind or, or people that deal with the cults or the occult or abhorrent. That means other types of spirituality. But here it is, brothers and sisters. You got to believe God Almighty, Yahweh, raised him from the dead. And a lot of people don't believe that. First of all, be, be sure that you believe that. Because I believe that with every moral fiber of my being, that God raised Jesus from the dead. And guess what? You shall be saved. You got to believe that. So when we get to verse 14, how shall they call on him of whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Verse 15, and how shall they preach unless they've been sent? Let's read this text from a couple of other versions of the Bible. How beautiful are the feet of those who bring the good news of Jesus. Hallelujah. Here's another version. How beautiful are the feet of those proclaiming the good times, excuse me, tidings of peace 
That means shalom, peace. Shalom was one of the construct names for who Jesus is. Still, here's another version. How beautiful is the man who comes to bring good news, who comes and brings the good news. But it's not easy being a preacher anymore. I know I was raised in a preacher's home. My father started preaching the year I was born, and he was called, I believe, six years before that. We intimately knew his pastor, a man by the name of Nathaniel Reason, who uh, pastored in San Francisco in that, during that time and era. And there were great preachers that we knew about, that I knew about. And we came to Sacramento and became a pastor at First Baptist. And here it is. I was around preaching. I was around preachers. I heard, got to hear some of the greatest preachers that preached in the middle and latter part of the 20th century. But today, it does not seem that people care about preachers, Sister Carol, anymore. It's like he's just hired help. He's just somebody that, that's just part of this, this, this strange play we, we do at church. Church is even becoming more of an, I hope I don't offend anybody out there, it's become more of a kabuki theater. Kabuki theater is something that the Japanese, it was, it was a Japanese theater in which they, the, the characters came to life to the point where you really thought that what they were doing was extraordinary, but then at the end of the play, they would step back into their normal characters. Well, that's what's happened. People want to just come to church, get a little song, go on about their business like ain't nothing happened. They want to go and not care about the words of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. They don't care about the Bible. They don't care about the word of the true and the living God. They don't care about God the Father. That's why people have problems with Romans, Romans 10, 9, because they don't know if they believe in God. They say, well, I believe in Jesus, but I don't believe in God. Some will say, well, I believe there's a Holy Spirit, but I don't know if I want to accept Jesus. They say, well, I believe in some of the things the Apostle Paul wrote and some of the things I don't care about what he said. Baby, you got to believe in the whole, here's a word for you, the whole enchilada. you got to believe in the whole Bible. And you have a whole lot of people that are living and existing in church in kabuki theater because it's just theater. And after they leave, nothing, nothing had any resonance on them. Nothing grabbed them. Nothing shook them up. But oh, how beautiful are the feet of those who still will come and present the gospel. The brothers that may be listening to me on YouTube today, don't get discouraged. Keep on preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They may not want to hear, but keep on preaching the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And how shall they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace. Well, the first thing that you have to be, you have to be sent. Apostolio, sent. You've got to be sent, brothers. You just can't jump up and say, well, this is something I want to do because it's Maybe I want to get an anniversary. It's something I want to do because I get my own YouTube channel. This is something I want to do because I'll be able to, to map on some of the fine women in the church. You know, you've got to be sent. And it means that you are sent. A capillo, it means to bestow. There are sometimes people will throw mud at your feet. But you still got to stand and proclaim the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Somebody may want to take you and hand you an effigy outside. You still got to be able to be strong enough to stand and preach the gospel. Sometimes you get discouraged. I know as a preacher, I get discouraged sometimes. But, but here it is. I still have to hold on to God's unchanging hand and know that no matter what, that coming and the beautiful feet that brings us, we've got to stand for the gospel no matter what. No matter what. No matter what, we've got to stand for the gospel. Leo, sin, 
to perform a special task, sent to bestow, sent to, uh, 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 to, to give a special message. You got to be sent. If you're not sent, you're not going to make it. Brothers, make sure you've been sent. Hallelujah. I've ran into situations where guys will say, well, I can't do it. I'm not strong enough. I can't preach that certain, you know, I'm not strong enough. Or I can't go and preach over there because they talked about me. Or I can't go over there. You've got to be sent. If you've got to be sent, you've got to stand. I, I shared you with you a couple of weeks ago. On the very day that my father passed, that was a Tuesday. I, I say this again. I taught Bible study Wednesday night. I preached at Trinity Baptist Church Thursday night. I preached Sunday morning here and eulogized my father and committed his body to the ground that Tuesday. That was within a week's time. Some people say, well, I don't know how you did it. It wasn't me. It was the power of the Holy Spirit inside of me. Don't you understand who we are? Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. But brothers, if you haven't been sent, you're not going to be able to withstand. Down at the city council, never will forget it. This lady, I won't mention her name, kind of clowned me. I was giving remarks, so the mayor left my mic on, and I was able to finish my remarks. And she said, well, who are you to tell me anything? I says, well, ma'am, my daddy baptized your, your husband. That's who I am. And of course, that didn't go over too well either on my dad. But let me say, if I wasn't sent, I wouldn't have been able to stand. If you've been sent, you can stand and withstand all kinds of things. When you've been sent by the Lord under the unction, under the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How could they, how could they be preached unless they are sent? As it is written, written grapho, which where we get the word graphic from, written, communicated through the art of writing, writing, grapho, hallelujah. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel, hallelujah. Second Corinthians 5.18, now all these things are from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ who gave us thus the ministry of reconciliation, meaning that we have the power of reconciliation through the power of the Holy Ghost, through the word of God that's been given to us who preach by God. So some people say, I'm well, scared. You can't be a scaredy cat and preach. The Bible says for uh, God is not giving you, thank you, Holy Ghost, the spirit of fear, but of love and the power and of a sound mind. You've got to be able to stand. And even if don't nobody want to hear you, you still got to stand. There are times people don't know this. Some of the best sermons I've ever preached in this congregation has been here when I've been here all by myself. Ooh, having a good time in the Lord all by myself. Hallelujah, wasn't nobody around. Some of you never got to even hear those sermons because I was just there by myself, but I was able to stand. The late Dr. William Earl Heights, who pastored here in Sac Sacramento, California, used to tell us at Minister's Conference, he would say, fellas, be ready to wake up out of your sleep and preach God's word. Right then and there, because I know guys, Unless they got, I'm trying to be funny, guys. Don't get angry with me. But I know guys that couldn't preach because they didn't have a script. Brothers, you got to get into the Word of God. You have to pray that you're anointing. And in these days and times in which we live in, you've got to have an anointing. Because if you don't have an anointing, you're not going to be able to stand. These are wicked times. These are not various times. These are times where men and women don't care nothing about nobody or nothing else. And if you don't have an anointing of the Holy Ghost over and in and through your life for you to stand, you're not going to make it. It is the power and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Beautiful. Beautiful. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel. Hararios. Harronious, beautiful, timely. You have to pre preach in a timely manner, in a seasonable or ripe time. And here it is. 
when you go to talk to somebody that's not saved, that's the right time. Give them this word. Not what you got to say. Because that, that's where you mess up at with us. Is. Leave us is someplace else and you give them the word of God. When I was a little boy, we had some older ladies at our church. And I don't care when I talk to them, they could be serving food in the basement, but they could talk in such a way. And when they said something to you, it was sensible and it was the word of God. Get into the practice of giving people the word of God. Somebody recently had lost someone and I went there and there were people all around giving advice, some of it okay, some of it you could toss out. And I didn't say it, and they looked at me and said, you're gonna say something? And I started quoting the 23rd number of Psalms and praying and it comes and parted inside their spirit. And then when that calmness came over them, I told this story when my sons were coming out of teenage ship, they lost one of their friends. And we were standing at the coffin and, and I was standing there with about 10 boys, all of them bigger than me at the coffin. And some of them were, were upset and were going on. And I couldn't think of nothing but to do but to just say, but Father, I stretch my hand to thee. No other help I know yet. Thou withdraw thyself from me. Whither shall I go? I've never had seen that not work. I've never seen the 23rd number of songs. The Lord is my shepherd. Yahweh, while we I shall. I've never seen that not work. Lift up your heads. Oh, ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting door, and the King of glory. Shall I never not sing that word? Fret not thyself over evil years, neither be thou envious over workers of iniquity, for they shall soon be cut down like the grass, and withered as the green earth. Trust in the Lord and do good. I've never not seen that work. There's only one name given under the heavens by which you shall be saved at the name of Jesus. Every knee must bow and every tongue must. I've never not seen that word. Get into the word of God. Hallelujah. 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 How beautiful. How Romeo's are their feet. How lovely are their feet. How pleasant are their feet. Hororia prosper in the right time. Hallelujah, a special proclamation of beautiful, have blessed Baruka feet. What that means is have blessed feet. That means when your feet go to a situation, you're praying from the bottom of your feet to the top of your head that, that you will be able to be blessed and be a blessing to someone else. Not just to yourself, but to someone else, to that congregation, to that person that's going through it, to that problem that presents itself before you. Be a blessing. Have blessed feet. And here it is. Even if they reject your feet, you still give them a timely word in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Horitia. Horitia. Beautiful. Beautiful. A gospel spreader. Be a spreader of the gospel. No matter, no matter what. People say, well, what are you going to say when you get to that situation? I'm going to give them, just give them some of the gospel. But, 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 but is that going to work? Give them some of the gospel. Yeah, I know, but give them some of the gospel. Well, let me give them some of the gospel. But, but they reject it. Then let them reject it. You give them God, some of the gospel. I told you this before. That's how you know how some people are iffy. I'm talking about believers now. When someone dies, watch what people that are around the family, at the funeral, at the repast, at the visit, watch what they say, and you'll know if they are anywhere near 10 9. And you will find some are not. And that's why I've been preaching this for so many weeks. I'm going to keep on preaching this. I'm going to keep on telling people that you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved because it's important as gospel spreaders that we get people saved. That's the biggest thing of all. Uh, sometimes we, 
we, we, we do things out of grandeur. No, get folks saved. That's what's the most important thing. Well, we go to this event, and, and there's this one event, and most black churches do it, and it's cool, but here it is. The very next week, the sinners that were there, where in the world are they at? We do things to be grand. No, get people saved. It is important that people be saved. People are dying at an alarming rate. They're dying in the daddies say on their way to hell with no God in their hands. Get them saved. My brothers and my sisters, everybody knows somebody that needs to be saved. They may not want to hear it, but pray that they get saved before it is everlasting too late. Hallelujah. Mark, let's a 16th chapter, verse 15, and he said to them, go into the world and preach the gospel to all creation. That's what we are to do because it is very difficult because a lot of people have Luciferian minds. Some people have the minds that are clouded with modern intellectualism. That's why those I love to debate or to talk to because, and I've shared this before, I've been proselytized by most every world religion and philosophy that you've heard of and some you haven't heard of. But here it is, nothing has ever made me go that away, away from God. Nobody has ever said anything. I don't care, I've, been, I've, I've, had, I've had people Every sect of Islam talked to me. Nothing ever made me go back. I've heard people from Buddhism. Nothing has ever made me go back. People from the Jehovah's Witness. Nothing has ever made me go back. People that follow um, uh, the Satanic Bible. Nothing's ever made me go back. People that read tarot cards. Nothing has ever made me go back. People that practice voodoo. Nothing has ever made me go back. People that practice your wrong being. Nothing has ever made me go back. It's all about our Lord and Savior. God the Father. God the Son. God the Holy Ghost. And that's where I'm going to stay. Hallelujah. 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 Matthew, the 28th chapter. We're almost through. 18 through 20. And Jesus came and spoke to them saying, All authority has been given to me in heaven and earth. Go therefore, make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things that I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even until the end of the age. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Acts the first chapter, 1-8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and the ends of the earth. This is telling us what as believers we should be doing. And preachers, this is what we should be doing. Not giving stock tips. Not telling people how to feel good about themselves. Not preaching uh, the prosperity. We're preaching the gospel of our Lord and encourage people to live for Jesus. Hallelujah. Isaiah 20, 52, 7. How lovely are the mountains. On the mountains are the feet of him who bring good news. Uh, hallelujah. Who, uh, who are with peace. Shalom and bring good news of happiness when announced salvation, says Zion, your God reigns. So we are to give peace, the power of peace, shalom, and salvation to the people. And we're about through. Nahum 1 9. Behold, on the mountain, the feet of him who brings good tidings who proclaims peace, shalom. Oh, Judah. Now that's also a type and shadow of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Keep your appointed feast, perform until the vows of the wicked are and shall be no more. Hallelujah. They shall pass through 
Israel. And those that are wicked are going to be cut off. We need to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. My brothers and my sisters, a lot of times I hear people make these comments. Oh, I've been hearing that all my life. I've been hearing, I haven't had three people that tell me, oh, I've heard just about every sermon that a preacher can give. You're a liar because the word of God is so profound. The word of God is so deep. The word of God is so powerful. The word of God is so laden with the power of the Holy Ghost that you, can, you don't have time to preach everything that's in the gospel. I've been preaching 30, be 35 years in January, and I've just barely scratched the surface of preaching the gospel. Been pastoring next month 18 years. I barely scratched the surface. But uh, some things you just have to keep on telling people. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. But the same preacher, I know there are some people that are discouraged and get real discouraged. I just want to bring to you the end on the second Timothy, the fourth chapter. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead and is appearing in his kingdom. Preach the word. Proclaim the word. Preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have here it is, itching ears. That's why you see, you see some people that are reasonable. You see some people that are intelligent, but they're not spiritual. And they'll go after people with itching ears because they don't want to hear the harshness of the word of God. They don't want to hear about sin. They don't want to hear about hell. They just want somebody to give them itching ears to make them feel good and warm and cuddly. But my brothers and sisters, we don't live in a warm and cuddly world. That's why it's important to hold on to God's unchanging hand while they can. For they will not hear some doctrine. They will turn their ears away from the truth and beside turn to fables. But you be watching in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. For I am ready to pour out a drink offering at the time of my departure as at hand. Some people say, well, why is it at verse 7 the scripture takes another turn? No, it really doesn't. For I have fought a good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. So, my brothers and sisters, be nice and kind to those who have the beautiful feet that should gospel spreaders of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. To those of you that are gospel spreaders, they may not want to hear, but you keep on standing on the power of holiness and the resurrection from the dead. That same Jesus died on that cross. He died on that cross, was taken off of that cross and put in a borrow to, but guess what? That's not the end of the story. He got up with all power in his hands. All power in his hands. All power in his hands. And guess what? They saw him in the earth realm. The Bible says 500 or more physically saw Jesus. Then he went up to be with the Father. And guess what? He's at the right hand. But guess what? That's not the because my Jesus is coming back again, riding a white horse and on written on his side, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. He's coming back again. Will you be ready when he comes back again? I don't know about you, but I want to be ready. I want to be ready. I want to be ready.
Thank you. Doors to the church are now open.